Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have a piece of box elder, and I'm excited for it. I've never been able to turn box elder before. Today we get to. This comes to us from viewers Steve and Carol Stevenson from the town of Stevenson. And when I say town of Stevenson, I mean they've created a town. They've created a museum that looks like a small town. If you go to townofstevenson.com, you can view a wonderful slideshow showing all of the fascinating details that they've put together. The museum's located in Richland Center, Wisconsin. Isn't that wonderful? I spent quite a little time looking over their, their wonderful movie. And I told Steve, I said, that must have taken a small town just to build. And it must have taken years to put it together. And he said, no, uh, family did it. Mostly he and his wife, mostly on weekends. Uh, it's just amazing. Townofstevenson.com. Give them a look. They do tours. So when Steve sent this to me, he sent it to me as one whole log. And the grain in this is apparently quite beautiful. He showed me a picture of a bowl that he turned. And it's wonderful. And so what I did was... I uh, took it to the bandsaw and cut off one section. See that red in there? Isn't that great? And then I cut the pith out of it. That's pith with a T. I didn't lisp. And that left this, which is what we're going to turn today. The piece is roughly 12 inches by 10 inches by 3 inches on one end and 4 inches on this end. And I want to save that bark if possible. So I'm going to measure and put a hole in here for my woodworm screw. We'll get it over here mounted up on the lathe. And we're going to make us a bowl or maybe a platter depending on how far the deterioration goes there. But I think, I think we can probably get a bowl out of it. Looks like it's going to be beautiful. I just can't wait. So let's not. Let's get over here to the lathe and get to turning. It appears that this decay goes in there quite a ways because I've really got my nose of my uh, live center buried in there quite a bit. And I've, I've set the piece up so that the thick end, which is this end, about four inches thick, uh, as opposed to three inches. So the four inches is closer to the tool rest. So I'll be taking it off of there first and that should bring it into balance a little more quickly. And then we'll just keep working away at this decay until we get rid of it all, which hopefully won't be too far. The, the two ends look okay. It looks like it stops right here, although there's a pretty good sized hole in this end up this way. Uh, we're going to be turning at 470 RPM. 5 8 inch bowl gouge all sharpened up. Mask and face shield on. And by the way, this piece is uh, green. I'm not sure how long ago it was cut down. I'm thinking a couple of months. It's about 30% moisture content. Well, I think this might be the most colorful wood I've ever turned. I'm going to go over here and start working on this corner. I put a glove on because I expect this is going to hurt some. And I'm going to work from the top side down, trying to keep this bark on here. I got a pretty loose piece of bark here. You know that wood's so pretty, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't even have bark. But that's contrary to the way I am. Yeah, I'm going to put some glue under this bark, see if it'll stay on there. I'll be back. 
Well, I've glued this edge and it, it was loose all the way along here. Some of this bark sounds a little loose. We might just lose all of it and that might not be awful because of this beautiful color. We'll, we'll give it a try. If it doesn't work, I'll just peel it all off. We're going to be turning at 570 RPM. I'm going to sharpen up my bowl gouge again and mask and face shield on. big chunk. I want the rest of it probably. Yep. Everything I glued on just came off. Well, we'll just we'll just see what happens. Okay, now this is not the shape that I was going for a few minutes ago, but then as I was making my cuts, I, I stopped short. I didn't finish it. I came back and I did the same thing and now we've developed this foot. And I don't know if I like it or I don't like it. I, I liked what I had going on, but now I kind of like this. But I think I'll go back to the original plan. I can get a smoother cut by going this way, but that will ensure that I lift that bark up off of there. But maybe the bark's just not important, I don't know. Let's see if I can pick the speed up now, should be able to. Now about 700. I think we're done with the profile. I need to go back here to the bottom and kind of start over a little bit. To be honest, that uh, woodworm screw probably doesn't have the best hold in the world. The wood seemed a little bit soft there, so I'm going to be pretty gentle here. I just need to know if I've reached solid material. So we'll mark up for our tenon. I guess we'll do a tenon, yeah. Boy, that still goes in there a ways, doesn't it? Wow. Maybe I better take it down a little further. A little further. I need to know I can depend on that tenon. Okay, that might be soundish. Let's just see if that's any more solid there. Still kind of soft. Might be just because it's green, I'm not sure, having never worked this wood before. We'll mark the tenon anyway.
Well, that is some red color. Wow. Okay, I'll uh, square up the sides of that tenon. And for that, I'm going to use this diamond point tool. And that's good. Now my base is too thick. This, I need to take some off of there. We are good. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with 80 grit on my 2 inch disc sander. The lathe will be spinning in reverse at about 350 RPM. I'll show you that as soon as I get my mask on. Well that should be easy peasy. I'll sand up through 400 grit and I'll bring you back when it's time to put some finish on here. See you in a bit. Well, as I suspected, the sanding was real easy. It's nice and smooth. Feels good. I decided to apply Howard Feed and Wax. Um, I, I've got two pieces of this wood since I cut it in half. So next time I'll probably try the shellac, depending on how this does. This might be quite wonderful and maybe we'll go with this again. I don't know. Anyway, I just thought I'd give it a try on here. So I'll let this set on here for uh, about 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. And I'll buff it up and I'll bring you back when it's time to work on the inside. See you in a bit. I've turned the piece around and have the tenon mounted up in the chuck. I've just sharpened my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm going to get my mask and face shield on. We'll be turning at 760 RPM. And I pretty much expect this bark to come off. It's, uh, it's loose in places. Like I said, And the tenon might come off as well. Could happen. No damage. Well, I still have my woodworm screw hole, so I'll put it back on there. I think we'll turn a recess and get going again. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to use my 3 8 inch bowl gouge to work on the recess and then my dovetail recess tool. Still spinning at 760 RPM. I'm just going to hit this edge here with some sandpaper, smooth it out a little bit. That's good. Then I'll uh, just finish that up when I sign it. Ready to turn it around.
hope I made that recess big enough. I may not have. I did just about perfect. Remember I had some trouble with that punky wood on the bottom right right where that uh, tenon was. So I think this is a good idea. Yep, that's a perfect recess. Okay. And you notice a lot of folks are afraid of getting hurt. I guess it's a good idea to be aware, no doubt about it. But I don't know that you have to be afraid. As long as you're not standing over here in the line of fire, I, I don't know what can happen to you. I suppose plenty. I'll probably hear the stories. But I feel very safe around the way of my personal self. Let me get my mask and face shield back on, and we're still turning at 760 RPM. Well, we're not getting as much red as I hoped for. And I'm getting down there too. I better measure. Oh, about three eighths there. About an eighth up here. About a quarter inch down there. So I can thin it out right here in this corner, but that's just about as thin as I can go. I have to remember I've got a recess in there, so it's even less. What did I say? A quarter in the bottom? A quarter in the bottom and then an eighth inch recess. So it's only about an eighth of an inch thick here. I can still go a little bit more in the corner, but not much. That's about as far as I better go, except for scraping, which is next. Now I've shown this tip before, but just in case you haven't watched every single one of my videos, uh, you need a burr on a scraper. You need a burr on this top cutting part here, and you, when you grind it, you get that burr. But you don't want to grind all the time because you're losing steel. So you can just take a, a round shaft screwdriver and Here's the heel of the bevel. Here's the toe of the bevel. Just lay that screwdriver across there. Apply a little pressure with your thumb on top. Raise it up off of the heel and onto the toe and just slide it across there. And it just takes two or three times and you get a nice burr on there. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sando Flex to do this edge right here. And then I will switch to my 2 inch sanding disc to do the rest of it. And I'll show you all that as soon as I get my mask on.
And I could do that enough to uh, make all of the dark brown go away, but I think I'll probably leave some. I think that'll add a little bit of visual interest. And then with the lathe spinning forward at about 350 amps, So that's what that's going to look like and I'll sand up through 400 just like I did a while ago and I'll bring you back when it's time to put the finish on. See you in a bit. Well I wish it had more red in there, but the red it has is pretty nice. Maybe the second piece will have more red, but it's, it's nice because it's unexpected, you know, you have this tan colored wooden bowl and then you have this red spot, that's kind of cool. And we've got some gray. That must be spalting. One thing I like about this feed and wax, you just can't do it wrong. You just put it on. There's no brush strokes, there's no marks, no nothing, it just goes on. Okay, I'll let that dry a bit and buff it up and I'll be right back. Well, here it is, one Box Elder Natural Edge Bowl in the books. It finished up at about 10 inches by eight and a half inches by two and a half inches deep. There's the bottom. Much more colorful than the inside, which is a shame. It's nice and light because it is fairly thin. It's thicker up here at the top because I wanted to leave a bit of a rim, uh, but it's only about an eighth of an inch on the sides and about three sixteenths on the bottom. Nice piece of wood. Thank you, Steve and Carol Stevenson from townofstevenson.com for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please, I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly, I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil. Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.